Welcome to Celebrating Act Two, where today John Coleman and I are speaking with Dr. Liz Lister about stuff that's important about for our stuff. health. Yeah. Well, you know, Dr. Liz, it, first of all, it's good to see you again. Uh, but thank you. Art and I are kind of selfish. We we do these videos, and we often get some great consultation for us. Forget about all those people we say we want to we want to represent. Our question <laughs> is dieting. Art and I yes. both struggle with our weight. Um, uh, probably me more than Art because Art actually does something about it most of the time. But is there anything new in the diet world? Oh, the diet world is a very crowded space. <laughs> what I thought I would share with our listeners today was a very interesting study that talks about, most people have heard about the Mediterranean diet sure, at this yeah. point in time. There's also a diet out there called DASH, the DASH diet, dietary approaches to stop hypertension. That sounds good. And what I, what... I wanted to share was a, a recent very large study. It was undertaken between Rush University in Chicago and Harvard University, of course in Boston. And it's called the MIND diet. The MIND diet. It's an acronym. Oh, the okay. M, the M is a long one. The M is Mediterranean dash diet. The I is intervention for neurodegenerative delay. Mediterranean dash diet intervention for neurodegenerative delay, mind, yeah. the mind. People spend a lot of time thinking up these names of the studies so that they have easy ones to remember. And of yeah. course it has to do with delaying cognitive decline, which we all want. They studied, it was a very large study only one part of it had a, over a thousand people recruited from different various senior living communities, people who were not diagnosed with dementia, and they followed them for a period of time for a number of years. They had them keep track of what they were eating, and they rated, they coded the different parts of their diet and what were they eating. And they were given a mind diet score. Okay. And then what they found by the end of the study was that the people with the highest scores, the highest mind diet scores compared to the lowest score. So these people are eating the better foods. And we'll talk about what those foods are in a minute. But the difference was a 53% lower Incidence of Alzheimer's. Wow, we Huge. all want that. Rachel, want the, that. so let me let me uh, uh, see if I've got this right. So basically, they didn't put anybody on a diet. They observed people and what they ate, what whatever it was that they ate for some period right. of time, and then they came to conclusions of what were the things that people were eating that were either better or worse for them. Um, uh, for the purposes of the study. Correct. Oh, right. correct. And then, what then was they closer made closer to the mind diet. Mm -hmm. And then they yeah. they then they extrapolated that and made recommendations for the rest of us, I assume. Correct. That's right. Yeah. They described what the mind in other words, certain foods gave higher scores. Yeah. Right. So we're gonna pull the curtain back and tell our listeners what those higher score foods are. Yeah. Too. Now this isn't this isn't a diet in the in my traditional thinking of of losing weight diet. This is correct. A, That's this correct. is a way of eating to uh, decrease your cognitive decline. Correct. And to fight Preserve. things like Alzheimer's and yeah. Yeah. That's right. That's exactly right. But it's an listen it, it may not be a weight loss diet but it's an important diet for those of us over 50, I can tell you. Yes, and probably even younger as well, John. That is something we'll, we will talk about on another occasion. However, really probably, I mean, this is really what we should be emphasizing in our, in our diets, not diet as in 
restriction, but what we eat. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to now, I'm now going to get ready to make a shopping list. Okay. You ready? Yeah. All right. Wait. Can I, okay, can it's I gonna just, be, it's going to be easy. You, there's no big surprises on here. Mm -hmm. can, can I just yes. jump in for a second? I want to make sure. A, I want to place a bet. I'm, I'm, I'll have a little gambling bug and me. I want to place a bet. And my bet says $10. Cheeseburgers are not on this list. Mm. No, we're not going to bet against you. So sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I better that pay attention. Correct. then. That is correct. That is correct. And after we do the list, I actually could share with you some details. They gave some actual guidelines. And I really like this because it makes it easy to remember okay. how many times a week. I'm personally not a calorie counter or count points. That's just more than I have time to do in a day. Yeah. It's even difficult for me personally to keep track of everything that I'm eating. So if I have these guidelines going forward, that I find that really helpful. Okay. Okay. All right. So no cheeseburgers, but would you like to hear what is on the list? Yeah. You bet. All right. You, will, you and our listeners will not be surprised. So these are basically, we know these to be brain healthy foods. These are part of the Mediterranean diet. Let's remember, we've talked in the past about the blue zones. One of the blue zones is in the Mediterranean. And this is where people routinely live to 100 in good health and good cognitive function. And that's what we all want. Yeah. We want to live as long as we can with our wits about us, right? So brain healthy foods include vegetables, fruits, some whole grains, nuts, some beans, Berries, in particular, among the fruits, poultry and fish, and of course, our friend olive oil. Really? Mm -hmm. Yes, olive oil, not necessarily for cooking, but olive oil to eat on salads, to literally to eat it. There are some who suggest, and this is, they didn't specifically talk about this in this study, or it's not exactly part the mind diet doesn't tell you to do this but i'm definitely aware of people who recommend drinking olive oil a little bit each day i haven't personally quite gone to that point but i do have it on salads almost every day hmm. right That's so those are the 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 foods that we know uh they talk about avoiding red meat this is really a, there's a controversy around this and they didn't answer that controversy. But what they observed in terms of their scoring was that they gave some guidelines on how many times per week to limit yourself to certain other foods that are not on the list. Hmm. Good. Yeah, I like this a lot. For me, this is really helpful. For example, pastries or sweets, cakes, etc fewer than five times per week you can do that that's yeah. doable right yeah. like just not have dessert today skip it for a couple of days and then that's it you've met that recommendation yeah seems reasonable they exactly it's reasonable and not that hard to do they observed that the individuals with the highest scores ate red meat less than four times per week Okay. I will keep researching this and we'll talk about this more in the future. There are people out there doing the carnivore diet where they're eating meat every single day and we just don't have the data yet. Okay. But what this study showed, and we do have data from this study, is that the people with the highest scores who had the lowest incidence of cognitive decline, they were limiting red meat to fewer than four times a week. Yeah. Okay. Which is, which is good. And then to your cheeseburger, because they put cheese and fried foods as one category, not more than once a week. Oh, boy. I'm in trouble. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. And, and same with butter, margarine. They put those in as the same. And uh, to limit to a tablespoon per day. So we want less than that. Now, So, again, I'm I would personally, I would just say not to not have that on a daily basis and you'll be good. 
I, I'm uh, I'm not a foodie, so I don't know really the difference between, let's say, olive oil and mayonnaise. I think of them both as kind of oily uh, substances. What what would be good about olive oil that is and and is not good about mayonnaise? Probably the omegas, the omega threes. Oh, okay. Okay, so may mayonnaise, for example, is usually made from eggs. Yeah. So it's very different. It's it's not a pressed oil. Okay. All right. And of course, olives are veggie. I, I would put those at the veggie or fruit. They're yeah. one of those ones that cross between because they grow on trees. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's really quite different. And yeah, mayonnaise, I would put closer over to butter, et cetera, but not yeah. because of the cholesterol. We'll talk about that another time because that's been yeah. that myth is debunked, not from it, cholesterol. Except for the, the meat fat. and fish, which seems to be like the uh, uh, the uh, guilty pleasure part of the diet, so that you don't get rid of all that. If you're a vegan or a vegetarian, it seems to me that this is the kind of stuff that you're doing anyway, in general, um, and that. Uh, unless there was an important factor for the fish or poultry uh, component of it, um, that this seems to be a decent cross for people who are into uh, vegan or vegetarian type diets. Uh, yes. Because it, it's, it's, it sounds pretty much like the ones that I'm on and that uh, I know some of my friends who are also um, uh, vegetarians, vegan, oriented. So it sounds kind of interesting yes. uh, as, as an appeal. Have they yes. done follow-up studies now of groups that just follow this kind of diet? There are many studies. We're talking about the Mediterranean diet, the DASH diet, and now they're putting them together. Mm -hmm. Mediterranean DASH diet. So there are many DASH as a D-A-S-H. Yep. It sounds like I'm saying hyphen. So it's yeah. Mediterranean hyphen and then DASH, D-A-S-H. And that way of eating is being studied for a lot of purposes by a lot of people. Great. We probably also want to make a comment about alcohol. Oh, of course. Okay, right. We're aware of what we call epidemiologic data in countries where wine drinking is regularly part of their way of life and way of eating. What they did in the study is at first they wanted to include that to be able to rate, to make recommendations. And as far as alcohol, wine was included as okay within the parameters of the diet, but then they took it out because it really is difficult to give a guideline that applies to everybody of safe amount of alcohol to drink. So they did take that out of the study. However, for people in whom it's okay to drink alcohol, they, they are okay drinking alcohol, probably wine is okay, uh, and obviously not in excess. Sure. Well, I guess, you know, uh, as far as diets goes, uh, and most people think of it for uh, weight control, uh, that this is the maybe the diet for uh, fat heads. For the brain. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but, keep but, our brains sharp as long as we can. Right. So, but I think uh, 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 as you open this, even though it could be important for people over 50, certainly, uh, people who uh, follow this kind of dietary regimen anyway from a younger age probably going to do themselves a, a world of good. And just because they're not yeah. throwing a whole bunch of cholesterol and artery clogging stuff into their system or less than you might have uh, with an unrestricted. Well, although, uh, John, maybe we should go do research. Uh, I'll help you research. I'll do the, the physical part. You may have to do the, 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 the part where you do the eating. Maybe if you put bacon on that cheeseburger, that has an offsetting effect. Uh, maybe oh, that'll be I can only year. hope. Yeah. I can only hope. Okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll look in back for you. Okay. All right. Next Get time we'll talk about the cheeseburger diet. Okay. <laughs> Dr. Liz, thank you so much. This is a really uh, a big eye opener. Very helpful. You are welcome.
For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.